Hello, everyone. Welcome to SceneDaily.com and the post-race wrap-up. I'm Steve Wade. Well, guess who's back? And it's been quite a while since we've seen, hasn't it? Well, indeed, Jeff Gordon is back in Victory Lane. He won the Samsung 500 at Texas Motor Speedway to earn the first victory of the season and his first victory ever at Texas. Gordon ended a 47-race losing streak that dated all the way back to October 2007 at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Now, last season was the first that Gordon had gone without a victory since his rookie year of 1993. Texas was one of just two tracks on which Gordon had not recorded a victory. Now it's down to one, Homestead, Miami. Now, one of the reasons Gordon won was that he didn't experience the kind of problems on pit road that other drivers did. For example, Carl Edwards passed Gordon on lap 296 of 334 to take the lead. But seven laps later, David Stremme spun out after hitting the wall to bring out the final caution period. And of course, all the leaders pitted. Now, Edwards' Roush Fenway team had problems with the front tires that cost Edwards valuable seconds. And when the race restarted, Edwards was 11th and could move no higher than 10th. Meanwhile, Gordon went on to hold off a challenge from teammate Jimmy Johnson. And, of course, Edwards was no better than 10th place. Gordon said his car was really perfect on the short runs after restarts, but as the race went on, he began to lose the balance and he knew he could not make a mistake. Well, obviously, over those final laps, he didn't make a mistake. And he won for the 82nd time in his career. But <laughs> it took a while, didn't it? And while Gordon was very happy about that, he also said it was tough to go winless for so long with a team that receives high expectations. When you have the high expectations that this team has and, and you go through what, what we've uh, you know, gone through with all the wins, and then when you don't win you know, and, and you, you have to hear it each and every day, every weekend, uh, when are you going to win, when are you going to win, um, you know, you, you go long enough and, and you know, it's... it's you feel like you, you've never won a race ever. Jimmy Johnson made a strong run at Gordon during the race's closing laps, but just couldn't get the deal done. Now Johnson, who is Gordon's teammate at Hendrick Motorsports, was trying to win his second race in a row after his victory at Martinsville. But for most of the race, he was a non-factor, a non-entity. But his crew made several adjustments to his car, and that put him in position to do something. He was third on the final restart, passed Tony Stewart for second place, but just couldn't go any further than that. He said it certainly wasn't because he wasn't trying very hard. Now, the cool thing about those last 28 laps or whatever it was, I mean, there was nothing left out there. Uh, my foot, it feels like I was at the go-kart track. Uh, I know mean, you push on the gas pedal so hard and your foot's asleep, my foot's still tingling from pushing the pedal so hard. And uh, it, was, it was fun, fun to drive that hard. And uh, I'm glad that Jeff got his win. If we're going to finish second, I'd want to finish second to him. Most observers felt Roush Fenway Racing would be strong at Texas, and indeed it was. For a time, it seemed that either Carl Edwards or Greg Biffle would win the race, but both of them were thwarted by problems in the pits. Now, in Biffle's case, it seems that the glue that holds the lug nuts onto the tires failed, and the lug nuts fell off the tires before they could be mounted on the car. That cost him track position he could never make up. However, he did rally to finish third and was one of three Roush Fenway drivers among the top ten. But he thought he had the fastest car. However, sometimes the fastest car doesn't win the race. All the way back to fourth, third. Um, you know, could have caught the, you know, 15 more laps would have passed the 24 or the 48. And then, uh, you know, a little while longer we could have got the 24. But uh, just ran out of time. You know, lost track position and, and uh, weren't able to capitalize on it. Had the fastest car today, looked like, and uh, not always does the fastest car win. Well, that's about all the time we have for the post-race wrap-up. Join us in two weeks after the Phoenix race, the first Saturday night race of the season. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Wade.